Hello, everybody. Welcome to Championship Predictions Round 17. Normal routine. We are at the start of a three-game week. So you'll see Sam for the Championship Check-In Podcast on Thursday. But we do have predictions to catch up with. And Sam, you, me and everybody else got caught out by seven draws in 11 games. Only 11 games in the Championship with a postponement up at Blackburn. We did both get one of those draws bob on. Maybe me a bit luckier than you, because I had Plymouth 2, Watford 2, which um, involved a last second goal to do that. You had Millwall 1, Sunderland 1. So I took it 8-6. So you're still up in the aggregate, Sam, 105-99. But happy days, 7 all in the week by week. Good morning. There's been a definite reluctance from my part to put too many draws in quite frequently this season, <laughs> whereas that's out the window now. And there were some great stats. Uh, I haven't got them to hand, but about the lack of away wins, I think, really? this season in comparison to seasons gone by. So maybe something we need to uh, do a little so bit home of home wins and draws today, yeah? I think so, yeah. Maybe something... I will go back to, um, to where I was reading about it um, and listening to my colleague on Friday night, Jim Proudfoot at um, Plymouth Argyle Watford, who was talking about it. So, yeah, some interesting quirks this season. So maybe just just go with a gut is what I'm saying, <laughs> rather than trying to overthink things. That's a great segue, Sam. You've done this before, haven't you? You need to go with your gut down there in the comments. Get your predictions in, copy and paste the fixtures from the description. Normal scores, give yourself one point for a correct outcome. Three... If you get one, Bob on, like Sam did with Millwall 1, Sunderland 1 at the weekend. Give yourself four points. If, for example, you predicted Oxford 2, Middlesbrough 6, and anyone in the comments going for seven goals in the next Middlesbrough game gets my endorsement as well. They've gone uh, four, five, six, haven't they, the last three games. Uh, you'll get yourself a bonus point for anything, uh, five goals or more. Sam, uh, midweek round, so we're splitting Tuesday and Wednesday games as ever. You are up first, my friend. Uh, back-to-back -back wins for Burnley, and at time of recording, they face managerless Coventry. I just this morning watched Chris Wilder's post-match after the the draw at, uh, at Coventry. Um, quite amusing, actually, saying where have these Coventry performances and <laughs> yeah. players been for the for the season? Um, oh, they turned up against us. Um, yeah, that was the uh, the gist of it. Um, so, yeah, well, listen, I saw them against Luton recently, Coventry, and they were they were excellent. One of Mark Robbins' last games, um, and they kind of mirrored that performance on on Saturday. Certainly, in terms of the first half, where they probably didn't deserve to go behind. So, I think they'll be really competitive here. Burnley are continuing to get it done without being overly impressive, and I'm going to go down that road again. I'm going to go Burnley two, Coventry one. Yeah, I think um, Burnley were a bit better at Bristol City, weren't they? I think that was a kind of more a, um, I don't want to say deserved, but we've seen some quirky Burnley wins when you look at the numbers, haven't we? So maybe Burnley are improving. Still a bit of chaos at Coventry. So I'm going to double you up on a Burnley home win here. I do like 2-1, Sam. Um, so I will take a 1-0, uh, Burnley 1 Coventry what did you nil. What did you think of the late penalty appeal? Did you see it? It was Josh Brownhill, I think. It was a ball whipped oh, in from God, the left hand side. His arm. Yeah, I mean they they didn't make a great deal of it on the on the commentary. I thought he had that knowing look, Josh Brownhill, when they got <laughs> well, him from behind the, the goal. You can tell with the body language, can't you? Yeah. Got his face beautifully from behind the goal, where he looked very concerned. Former club as well, isn't it? Bristol City. So that would have been a. An Why don't we ask the, the Bristol game. City fans in the comments for their view on that? Because I think I know probably what they are. Um, I will move us on, uh, Sam. Hull versus Sheffield Wednesday. We, we've been threat level high for Tim Volta for a while, Sam. Three consecutive losses now, and they're in the bottom three. Um, so I think I am going to continue backing against Hull, which I've been doing fairly regularly uh, Wednesday drew, didn't they, with Cardiff at home. Wednesday have dropped off a touch, but I'm expecting a trend up towards Christmas. Didn't start at the weekend like I predicted, unfortunately, for the Wednesday fans. I will take 
I'm going to take the score you did in the last game, Sam. A 2-1 home win, away win. <laughs> Whole <laughs> one. <laughs> Whole one. Sheffield Wednesday, two. Well, I think the certainly the narrative that the manager is trying to build at, at Hull, um, or certainly the, the the frequent kind of sentiment post-match is that they're making chances and, and not converting them. And there is obviously something in that. I think if you looked at the game at the, the weekend, there was probably more golden opportunities for them rather than, than Luton. So I'm going to go for them to get something here. Um, I can't go all in on the victory because it's been so long since they've tasted one. So I think Sheffield Wednesday are probably good for a point here. I'm going to go for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, Sam, Norwich versus Plymouth. Any Plymouth fans travelling across to Norwich on Tuesday night, you have my undying respect because you ain't getting much sleep um, going into work for Wednesday morning, right? What's your, what's your call, well, Sam? Well, thank goodness... Uh, Storm Nicola Bert. Berti has done one. <laughs> Nicola um, Berti, what a mention. One for the kids, eh? Yeah. Um, James Richardson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not a journey you'd want to be doing um, under driving rain. I hope I did the commentary justice on Friday because I didn't think Argyle were very good. I didn't think that goal was going to come. And I thought Watford, on the other hand, Apart from that final little bit where they should have been a little bit more clinical on the counter attack, you know, when they had the opportunities to close the game, game off, um, they were very impressive. I thought Watford for for the majority. So you cannot write them off, can you, Argyle at home park? I mean, yeah, more for me. Um, but away from home, we know it's a different kettle of fish. And Norwich, I think, quite impressive and could have won that game at the Hawthorns. Both teams could have won, couldn't they? There was quite a lot of chances to to snatch that. So I'll just go for a narrow Norwich win, despite, you know, despite their, their injury woes. Showed their quality at the weekend. Andre Gray to get another. 3-1 Norwich. Oof, that feels a bit big, but I'm going to go with it. I like Norwich for this one as well, Sam. And I think you talk about the injuries. I think Gunn being back in goal is is important for um, Norwich. We don't particularly like Plymouth at home. I did the game as a watch along as well. And I totally agree with with your take. It was um, a virtuoso Andre Gray performance. Watford fans, are like, where on earth did that come from? Yeah, where I, was that in the last year or so of his, his, his Watford career? But... What do they say? Beware of the X or whatever, because he was yeah. highly motivated when he. I thought he was Argyle's best player. He was. He, he was at it. He looked really motivated, and um, maybe there was a a little bit of disharmony towards the end of his his time at Vicarage Road. Big style, big style. Um, I'll take the two goal margin then, um, Sam. And despite bigging up Andre Gray, uh, let's go for Norwich to keep a clean sheet here and end. Their winless streak, I will take Norwich 2, uh, Plymouth nil, And on we go to Sheffield United versus Oxford. Oxford, the latest victims of the Middlesbrough click. <laughs> we, we talk about Middlesbrough in a minute. We, th we, we thought the um, data might start telling the truth soon on uh, Middlesbrough's chance creation. And Oxford were the latest victims there. Um, Sheffield United, as you mentioned, a uh, good performance by Coventry. And they did play with 10 for the... Um, majority of the second half, wasn't it? Um, they got sent off in the first half, Ahmed Hozic, didn't he? Yeah. Um, so I think there's mitigating factors there. So I'm going to back Sheffield United here. Um, love Cooper in the goal. So we'll go for the clean sheet and a very predictable um, Sheffield United 2 0 home win, Sam. Yeah, it was uncharacteristic. The couple of goals they conceded, wasn't it? I think Suter certainly for the the corner. Did he let it go? Did he leave it? First one, yeah. I mean, it's different. It's difficult to see exactly if he's in the perfect position to go and attack it from from some of the angles. But the second one, I think he's the one that lost Thomas from the from the set piece as well, which is very unusual to see a centre half heading one home first kind of contact from six or seven yards. So that was very unlike Sheffield United, I would say. Um, but starting to click into gear. Going the other way, Raksaki. Um, mm, finish. Really good finish. Really good finish. So, yeah, I, I mean, I can't 
on the on the uh, the back of the defeat for Oxford the other day. I can't disagree with you. Um, I'll go three nil. And you are up, Sam, first for the Ben Pearson. Dan Johnson derby here. Stoke versus Preston North End. Ooh. Uh, they both won one, weren't they, on Saturday? I think that's the smart money, isn't <laughs> it? It smells good, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the smart money. I think you just still, I'll probably say this every time, but I mean, the Stoke fans and the Preston fans will be getting bored of me, but just waiting for them to click into gear fully, aren't you? Um, signs right. of improvement, not really getting that momentum. So, I will just play a bore draw, I'm afraid. Sorry, 1-1. One, one. Mate, it's a scribble. I was going to do exactly the I was going to do exactly the same thing to be honest. So, I think I'll back Stoke. I there's not much between the two and you're totally right. You're just waiting for one of them to, you know, hit form and improve from where they are at the moment, which does feel a little bit middling. I just feel if you're talking about maybe match winners and goals, I think Stoke maybe edge it and with home advantage. So, I will raise your 1-1. One, one. With maybe a Tom Cannon goal, and I'll go 2-1 um, to Stoke. Notice we have paid heed to your um, lack of away wins here, Sam. Only only one so far, so we're, we're paying attention. Maybe a few more draws needed. I'll kick us off for Watford, Bristol City. Um, you're going to be able to give me a bit more feedback here because you saw Watford in the flesh. I think we need to, we need to pivot on them now. They're... They're just good, aren't they? We're, it's not a hot start. It's not all home form. He's doing a good job, and they're not going to be in the in the bottom half like everybody thought they were. So, um, I'll back Watford. We normally like Bristol City to be sort of fairly tight, so maybe a low scorer. Um, let's take Watford one, Bristol City nil. Yeah, I was really impressed with them. Um... First half especially, second half it flipped a bit, didn't it? Which is is normally the way in in any game of football when one side's been so dominant, they were they were sat in a little bit in the second half and a bit more reliant on the counter attack. But in the first half, you know, some of the control possession football was really eye catching. You know, the defenders can all handle the ball. Thought it was quite a an interesting quirk, really, that Argyle were allowing Matty Pollock for for long periods to have the ball, and he's looking like a exquisite defender, all-round defender, really, in terms of his ball-playing ability as well. But I like the balance of the front three. Um, Chak Batadze obviously goes a little bit deeper when they haven't got the ball, but his craft bars pace. I thought that was a big problem for Argyle when he got turned up against Gibson. And Bio, I mean, take away, obviously, the goal scoring at the moment and obviously the missed chances. I think his all-round game is very good. He uses his body brilliantly, links it fantastically. So... You know, I like that that trio. Um, and I thought they were very good. Just obviously, it's kind of, they did manage the game well in the second half, but it's, I, I don't know what it is, which means they they can't kind of, you know, be, become a little bit more consistent away from home. I don't know what it is, if they lack a little bit of character or or, or I don't know, or a little bit of maybe depth in, in quality. But yeah, saying those couple of things, I don't, I don't really think that's it. It's hard to put your finger on it. But I think they're very good. And I think we've got to start talking about them potentially sneaking in there, maybe. Um, so I'd have to echo what you said. Um, Bristol City hard to beat, though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. But I mean, Watford have got this incredible home record. Did you go for 1 0? I took the 1 0, yeah. Yeah, I'll take, um, I'll take another 2 1. <laughs> Uh, this is the TV game, Sam, I think, Tuesday night. Is that right? Sunderland versus West Brom. Kevin Kilban derby. Oh, this feels quite difficult. Um, nice to see Fellows and Madger rekindling. <laughs> um, what a goal that was. What a finish. So that's been a bit of a long time coming, hasn't it? Because those two have not been at the same level as they were early weeks of the season. Sunderland very good for a half, weren't they? And Neil Harris... Uh, Paid owed to his goalkeeper for some for, for some big saves in that game. Could have got away from them. And obviously, they're just a difficult nut to crack at the moment, aren't they, Mill? So, found a way to get a point. I think low scoring. I think tight. And I think, given what we saw from Sunderland in that first half, I'm just going to side with them by a goal to nil. Yeah. So, four draws in a row 
for Sunderland it does feel like you're right, Sam, that they've been laced with mitigating factors and there could easily have been one or two wins in there, couldn't they? And I know people go fine margins, blah, blah, blah. But, um, and I mean, West Brom bloody love a draw, don't they? How, how many have they got for the season, West Brom? Eight draws in 16 games. So I will take the draw then, Sam. And I'm sure it'd be maddening for all the Sunderland and West Brom fans because I just want to I mean, they'd probably rather just lose one and win one at, at this point, wouldn't they? And you get more points for that, um, frankly. But let's take the 1-1 one, one in this, just on the basis of the sheer amount of draws lately um, for these two teams aggregated. Uh, on to Wednesday night, Cardiff versus QPR. And, mate, you'll know better than me, good press conference from Sifuentes. This is not smelling good now. Um, all is... All is really not well if we didn't know it already at, at QPR. So I'm going to back. I'm going to back Cardiff. This feels like um, we're closing in on a possible. I don't know a possible falling out or a possible fed up manager um, there, and the results aren't coming. So I'll take Cardiff, and I'll take them two one. Sam, what's your what's your view on um, the mood at QPR after the weekend? It's been a bit of a blur the last few days, but I caught a snippet of it somewhere. Uh, I can't go too in depth today, but I will do some digging before we oh, please, yeah. we talk Thursday. But we, you want an away win, don't you? Do it. Nil one. There you go. Any logic behind that, Sam, or is this the the, the heart over the head? Um, a little bit of that, but also <laughs> having seen Cardiff recently and them not looking obviously as convincing as they were early part of um, of Omar Ritz's, um tenure. So I just think. You know, amount of games, bit of luck maybe on QPR side. I mean, it's not great going into the game off the back of a a one-one where you've missed a penalty and you've had to be reliant on one of the opposition players scoring for you. So, and I think I said to you about a month ago, I I, I don't actually know where the next QPR goal is coming from, but it's coming on Wednesday night, and it probably could be in a similar fashion to the one they got against Stoke. It might be a penalty or an own goal or something, but. There's going to be a defensive masterclass coming up from a few of the, the back line. <laughs> uh, where are we going to next? I'm going to have to build them as league leaders now, Leeds United. And I've got to say, um, we're not doing a checking podcast this week. Three teams all tied on two points per game at round 17 at the top of the table is great. But Leeds are at the top of that pack after their dramatic 4-3 win at Swansea. And they, Sam, are at home to Luton. Yeah, I mean, amazing game. I, I caught up on that last night. I didn't have the uh, pleasure of watching it live. I was uh, entertaining yesterday. Some, some, some mates at home, so the the kids had the TVs. Um, but, I mean, it was amazing, wasn't it? Amazing. You, you felt obviously Swansea had salvaged something. And then all of a sudden, I mean, the, games were, the, the goals were very similar, weren't they? I mean, obviously, Swansea are going to have some, some work to do on... Their back line, their high line, Leeds got in multiple occasions for their goals. Um, wasn't too many other chances, I don't think. Too many other shots on the target. Maybe that was only the the four that they had, actually, if memory serves, looking at the stats late last night. Um, I don't think Luton are in a place where they can give Leeds a proper game at the moment. That may come later in the season, but I think in their current guys, despite the win over Hull, I'd have to go for a home win and I'll go for a comfortable 2-0. Yeah, the the ones that have been coming for me are Leeds at home to nil. So I would have liked 2-0. So I'll take 1-0. Um, Leeds to keep on trucking and like you say, maybe Luton will just try and keep it tight. And But you, you're right, Leeds are probably going to have too much for them um, at the moment and are going to be looking to leverage this busy period up to Christmas to get themselves a lead up at the top of the table. Now they've, um, they've got the goal difference advantage, but beautifully tight up there. Right, here we go then, Sam. Middlesbrough versus Blackburn. Someone's going to do it in the comments. Go for the seven goals. Unfortunately, we've got John Eustace in the away dugout who will not countenance someone scoring seven goals past his team for sure. But Middlesbrough are firing on all cylinders, four, five and six in the last three games. Latte left banging the goals in. It feels like it's clicked. So I've got to back 
Middlesbrough, Sam. I'm not going for the seven or or the five, but I'll take them for a Cushti 3-1 victory. Middlesbrough three, um, Blackburn one, and no doubt Azaz and Latte Lath to be contributing. Yeah, Latte Lath is looking like a safer bet now over my uh, Hadji Wright infatuation. Um, <laughs> infatuation. <which other> <laughs> Which had a steamed in there in the summer. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't have got very good odds, would you? Um, he, he was the favourite, him and um, yeah. who's the lad for Leeds? Because we didn't know the lead, uh, Matteo Joseph, which was a strange. Yeah, one, and, and Latte Laff had what that seven in seven or whatever, didn't he, back in the last season? So oh, I think better than was, that, even like 11 in 12 or something, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. yeah. Um, it feels like Blackburn haven't played for an eternity now just because they had one game called off at the, mm. the weekend. I think they won handsomely, did they not? Um, the previous Cardiff. game. So they're in decent fettle, but you got a back borough at home. 3 1, did you go? I did. Go on then. 4 2. <laughs> <laughs> Prediction of the day goes to Sam Park in there. So that will take uh, Sam over the five goal threshold for a bonus point, And I would love to see it. Your mate Eustie will not, he's <laughs> not wanting six goals going in in a game for sure, is he? Uh, Portsmouth versus Millwall, Sam. Yeah, this will be a great atmosphere, won't it? Um, night game, absolutely. Not the worst journey, actually, for the Millwall fans, is it? No, get yourself there if you live, um, yeah, south coast, London area, Danny A3, get yourself there. That'll be a good atmosphere. And Pompey, obviously. Fleet Services, is that A3? Peas Pottage, or is that the M3? Oh, someone will, someone me will smart me up on my... Um, Fleet is uh, the M3, the M- mate. M3, the M3, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Sam. I'm going to shut up and let you do your prediction, mate. Um, horrible for Portsmouth. Obviously, I, I text my mate on Saturday lunchtime. Um, With the fans up there as well. manager. It would have been, wouldn't they? I mean, that's a mate. tough one to swallow. I presume they would have travelled Friday morning as well. So you've been up there for, what, 24 hours before you get the call off and then straight back on the coach. So that was a blow. Uh, but it'd be fresh in comparison to Mill, who have had a... Had a tough game, bit of a dressing down from Neil Harris at half time as well. It sounds like after that limp 45. Oh, it feels low scoring. What the hell? 1 0 Pompey Mills. Beautiful run coming to an end. So I'm tempted to flip that and I'm tempted to take the 1 1. Um, mm. I so it's, think, one of, I think, it's one of the three, isn't it? All the four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, throw, let's throw nil nil in there as well. The under, under two point five crew here, yeah. Um, so I totally agree with you. That must be. I mean, just quickly as a player, Sam, that must be so irritating, mustn't it? You must just mm. come back to training, just pissed off that you, you know, the, just a waste of time and time and energy, right? Where postponement that late. Yeah. In all honesty, if it was a home game. You can flip it mm. to the positive and spend the day with a family. Or in my younger years, you start thinking about, oh, it'd be quite <laughs> nice to watch uh, Gillette Soccer Saturday with a few beers. Um, <laughs> but for the Portsmouth lads, you don't have that luxury, do you? It's probably, I wouldn't imagine they did any training unless they got the call when they were at the hotel. And if there was a facility nearby, you've obviously got all the kit with you. So sometimes, mm. but you want to get back on the road, don't you, to just get, get home get yeah. home um so i'd be surprised if there was any training um given that it's a wednesday game the plan probably would have been to have sunday off with the traveling so that's a fair comment yeah yeah, yeah. i'm not sure how it would have played out actually for the pompey lads but just in terms of the the faff yeah that's horrible for in a way okay. i remember it happening to me at port vale actually getting to the ground i think on a on a saturday after traveling on the on the friday yeah it's Who annoying are you for Swindon at the time, okay. yeah. Um, so yeah, really annoying for them. Um, but yeah, I think I'll probably yeah, think maybe they could be a little bit fresher, the mill, despite having done the traveling. Okay. So because you've mentioned about the extra day, I'll take the one one out of those options. I was <laughs> I was fancying flipping about it. it's a good point about it being a Wednesday night, not a Tuesday. Maybe that maybe that's the difference. Yeah, time. yeah. I don't know if they'd have just said, right, have the Sunday at home and then Come back in the fresh Monday, Tuesday. There's plenty of time to prepare. Well, they've had so long to prepare. It's only you obviously do a little bit of video on on Mill now being the opponent and 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 do a little bit of shape work. But two days is probably more than enough on the training ground, given that they've been there over the international break, which can get a little bit um, repetitive in any case. 
Right, last one, Sam, is Derby Swansea. I'll be doing this as a watch along on the channel. Come and join us from about half seven on Wednesday night. We've got to give set piece FC a goal, haven't we? Because Derby got another set play goal at um, Preston. So I can't have a Swansea clean sheet. Um, and Sam, we've been going Swansea under 2.5, under 1.5, but their last game was 4 3. So maybe Swansea low scoring is out the window now. So I might take a fun field. Desmond, which is what happened in the last TV game, I did. I'll go Derby 2, Swansea 2. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? I think I think that was going to be my shout. I'm going to be at this one, actually. So You are? Yeah, so we're both going to be talking about this one. And I think Derby's home form has been great, hasn't it? You know, other than the pretty wild game against, um, against Norwich, where they were beaten right. by the old goal in five so i'll probably just side with the home side but obviously i i think swansea are going to be absolutely fine and i think it will be a season that improves steadily for them i think i've been inconsistent in saying that and i think luke williams was really positive in the aftermath of you know four three defeat at home just the amount of problems that they they cause leads when that's been a obviously a um an area where they've been toiling a little bit so far this season in terms of the the goal return um i will give them a goal here but i'll just go for my third will that be a fourth two one it's not gonna be oh i've already written a two mate you're committed here no one nil <laughs> <laughs> okay uh right get involved in the comments you can change your mind at the very last second like sam parkin did um, just then, um, give you see, you know, the scores, don't you? One point for a correct outcome, three points for correct score line, and a bonus point. You get four points if your uh, prediction has five or more goals. We won't keep Sam any longer because you're going to see him on Thursday doing the championship check in podcast. Uh, check that out, and we will see you then. <laughs>